o'clock? I mean, we have a few minutes. We're just going to make sure things. Wait, how do you wait, is it on? Too. Is it yeah. on? Good. Wait, is it recording? Yeah, it's live. Wait, now? <laughs> it's okay, we have a minute or two. Uh, I'm here. But no one's using it right now. Oh, I don't know, I don't see people. Huh? Yeah. Is it public? You're live. You're building an orange. Okay. Don't drink in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just puffing? Assalamu alaikum, Dana, sister. Hello. <laughs> We're starting in a few, in a minute or two. Yeah. And I'm going to be the cameraman. No, you're not. <laughs> okay, you have other viewers. Say your salam. Assalamu alaikum. Love you. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh huh. Can you please comment if you could hear us? Is the picture clear? Can you hear us? Okay. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, ready? Yes. You want to begin now? Okay. Don't get off with the key. Okay. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for tuning in on this webinar, Kicking Hate Out of This World. I am your host, Susu. I would like to introduce you to my mom, Gorbaki Saleh, uh, the author of Princess Diversity and the Golden Room. I have to go. Bye. Peace. Okay. Hello everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for tuning in. Um, my name is Kolmeki Saleh. Some of you know me and some of you don't. Um, I am actually, I was actually born in Afghanistan, Kandahar, and I came to the United States of, of America at age four. I am a teacher, an author, and a mentor for young children and parents. Hey, this is something new for me, so bear with me, getting my nerves out. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I was a refugee myself, uh, running from the war in Afghanistan with Russia. So now I, I was raised here in, in the United States of America. That's a little bit about me. I'm also a mother of four lovely children and a grandmother to a little baby girl. So... Um, uh, I am an author of two books. My first book is um, The Everything Soup. And my second book is Princess Diversity and the Golden Rule. Both of my books are uh, focused on the golden rule, building morals and character into our children. So um, why was I inspired to write these books? Uh, well, I don't want to speak about The Everything Soup because... Um, I could, I could talk about that later, but I want to talk about Princess Diversity and the Golden Rule. Um, as a kid, um, being raised here, being a refugee, um, having two different cultures, one was my Afghan culture, one was my American culture, living in a society where a lot of people did not, did not know about Islam. Uh, I, I faced a lot of hate growing up here, especially in school, that's where the hate comes from. When you're in school and the kids are bullying you because you wear a hijab or you um, just uh, don't fit in with the rest of the group, you're the only Muslim in the school. So it was very hard for me. I was bullied for three years in my middle school year. Um, I forgave all my bullies, but uh, what was hard for me is I never understood why teachers never did anything about it, why they turned a blind, blind eye to it. 
So um, what I went through has inspired me to write and be a voice to other children who have been bullied and have gone through hate. Um, so this book I wrote for that purpose is um, to help other children build their confidence, build their self-esteem. Um, what happened to me during my school days is that I lost my confidence, I lost my, my self-esteem. I, I felt like I was useless, I was nothing. And um, one was due to the fact that I was being bullied and none of the teachers really did anything about it. I had gone to the vice principal twice and he just told me to ignore it. Um, I think it's hard to ignore it when it's happening every day, almost in every single class. You're being called a name and, you know, several times my hijab has been pulled down off of me. But the thing is, I was not the only one bullied. There was other kids being bullied too and I felt sorry for them. I felt sympathy for them. I understood how they felt. So it was really sad for me. Um, but, you know, I overcame what happened. And I know still today, um, hate is rising, especially what's happening with current events. And I think I really need to speak about this and tell other people and give solutions and strategies for parents, and administration, teachers, mentors, everyone who's out there who deals with children to help them, you know, because this is a, it's very hard. You, you never understand unless you're in that person's shoe how it feels to be bullied or hate. Um, you know, if you don't know, you don't understand, at least try to understand you know, have some sympathy for those people. Um, so, like I said, um, I was inspired by what happened. What motivated me is what happened during my childhood. But it was this book is not just for me. It's for all those out there who are being daily bullied. Uh, today, uh, I see so many videos and articles where... Um, the kids after the Trump um, won the election, kids um, in the cafeteria screaming, build a wall, build a wall. Why are we building walls? I mean, why don't we build a, a wall around the heart that has hate in it? You know, that's where we should build our walls around hate. Not, a, not, not to other people. Why are we deporting people? Why are we discriminating against people? All of this should be understood and Hopefully, I'm, I hope to be able to um, make it possible. Um, so it's, it feels kind of strange talking to a cat, uh, phone. It's my first time doing a webinar. And I do apologize if you notice my nervousness. And um, so, um, so I want to talk to you about my book before I give you, uh, there's two parts to this webinar actually it's my launching my book and the other part is uh, doing my webinar on strategies uh, on how to deal with bullying and hate. So my book, uh, Princess Diversity and the Golden Rule, uh, if you see the front cover, cover, this girl, she's Princess Diversity, Her, she's not really a princess but um, her parents named her Princess Diversity. So I don't want the boys to think that this is only a book for girls. <laughs> so I named her Princess Diversity. Um, I was inspired by the Aborigines of Australia. They had green eyes. I saw pictures once and you know they had dark skin and blonde hair and some of them had colored eyes. And you know it really made me think like all these people were always thinking we're better than the other nation or the other other race or the other faith group. But when we think and we study history, we see that we have ancestors that have, you know, gone through different... If you check our genes, we've been uh, probably having ancestors from different parts of the world. Um, even yesterday I saw um, an article about these couples who were um, Caucasian and they had, Af they had children who were dark in color they looked like African American, but if you study their history, but probably they had that gene from uh, the past, and we never could assume that we're like pure, whatever we believe we are to be. So that's why I was inspired to draw. Uh, my I asked my illustrator to draw her in that way. 
So the reason she's called Diversity is um, when she was born, of course, it's not in the story, but her parents does name her Diversity because she has a lot of different uh, characteristics. She, um, of course, the color, color of her skin, the color of her hair and the eyes. Uh, she has freckles on her face. You know, things that kids get laughed at. She has, uh, she's poor. Um, you can see in the picture, her glasses are broken. Of course, kids get laughed at laughed about their glasses mm. her clothes are not that good they're worn and torn so she's really poor and she also it has a handicap you know a lot of our kids um they look down on kids who cannot function as other people could so um it's sad and we need to educate our children build sim build compassion in their heart towards all types of types of people Okay, this is one picture I really love. Um, if you can see closer, it's um, children all across the world and a map of the world. P children come from all different parts of so their dress differently in their own native uh, clothing. So the more we tell our children that, you know, the more we study the culture of other people in societies, the more we'll kind of have understanding towards them and respect them and enjoy their their whereabouts and okay i also have this one more picture to show i'll bring it up okay this picture this that's princess diversity this is an african-american girl this is a native native boy. I really stand by the natives because I know they went through so much, especially today what's going on in Standing Rock. Um, you know, it's sad, you know, they're still being, pro you know, being oppressed like that. So, you know, I, I know natives, they went through a lot and I really care about their cause. And this is a boy who's, um, who has a, a handicap issue, a birth, a birth defect. And this is, of course, a Muslim girl with a hijab. And this is a Jewish boy. And we know Jewish. Uh, they went through a lot. So when Princess Diversity speaks, she's not only speaking for herself. She's speaking for all the children. No matter what race, religion, culture, where they belong, what nationality. She's speaking for humanity. So that was my main message I wanted to give through this book. I'll read the summary in the back. As you know, hate is prevalent everywhere. Princess Diversity is here to stop by teaching children about the Golden Rule. The word hate is not a word in Princess Diversity vocabulary. She'll do anything to stop hate and bullying. She is, she is upset that her friend has been bullied. Princess Diversity cannot let hate continue in her school. She wants to stop in its tracks by teaching those students in, sorry, by teaching the students in her school about the golden rule. Can she get the message across to those who have a habit of bullying? Will Princess Diversity stick to her words and face the school kids with bravery? You must read to find out. So, um, I'm just going to go back to the beginning. Well, this was the first page. Princess Diversity, she's sleeping in her bed and something really happened. I'm going to read the first passage, the first page. Princess Diversity was tossing and turning in bed. She could not sleep because earlier in school that day, a classmate shared a passage of his writing journal with her. She had written about how he was bullied by his classmates and how it made him feel. She could not forget how sad he looked. Being someone herself who was bullied, she understood how he felt. She couldn't accept the hate anymore and stay silent in front of those who hurt others. This was enough. She was going to do something about it tomorrow. But what to do? What to do? The nightlight cast a soft glow on the poster that hung on the wall. She softly read the bolded letters, the golden rule. That's when she smiled to herself when the idea came to her head. We could see the poster, the golden rule. <laughs> anyway, this part of the page has some 
is related to some parts of my life. Um, I was sitting one day in seventh grade. It was study hall, so we didn't have much to do, and there was this young boy who was being always bullied. Uh, I felt his pain. So I told him, can I read your journal? And he said, sure. And when I start reading his journal, he talked about how he felt, how the kids treated him, and how sad it made him feel. So, um, and it really moved me, and I was very sad. And I remember to this day, I, you know, I, I have the, when any, anytime you have emotion attached to any, any memory, you, re, you remember it, remember it vivid, vividly. So, um, it was very sad the way I saw him being so sad and how he felt. I even read um, what the teacher had wrote. The teacher had wrote that stick, sticks and stones might break your bones, but words do not. And, you know, thinking about that, it's, your bones will heal, but a heart does not heal. Depending about, upon the type of person that is, some, some children could heal. Like, I healed, thank, thank God. You know, I'm grateful to God that God healed me from the pain, what I felt. So now that's why I am moving on and making a, trying to make a difference. Even if it's, you know, changing one child's life, that's, that's, I'll be happy. So with this boy, uh, I hope, I hope it has not affected his life. And my friend, whoever he, wherever he is, I hope he's successful in life. But some people do not change. You know, some people become depressed. Some kids become suicidal. And there's news that so many kids have committed suicide because they, they're being bullied. And, uh, you know, we have to do more. You know, we can't just say, oh, okay, I gave a lecture, I gave a talk, I wrote a book about it, that's it. We have to do more to stop this bullying, this hate. And we have to understand where is this hate coming from. That's what will be discussed in my webinar. So, um, of course, what I did, uh, from 6th through 8th through grade, I was bullied. During the 8th grade, it died. My teacher, she was uh, telling us a story, and she mentioned something. She said, if kids, um, someone laugh at you, laugh with them. So that's what I did. In 8th grade, that was it. You know, I was like, you know, I'm going to get up and stand up for myself, and I'm going to stand up for other kids. That's it. My bully, the, the bully I had, he was a huge, tall kid. He would bully me every day, and he was a leader. And I don't know, I, I still don't understand why he was bullying me. He was famous. He was, you know, he was, uh, by the way he was dressed, he was well off. I didn't understand why he was bullying me. Um, the only thing I could come up with is hate. I mean, I hadn't do anything to him. I was always nice to him. He was big. He was tall. He's someone you do not want to mess with. You know, like he was really, really tall, like those basketball players. And, you know, he was a leader. When he started making fun of me, the whole class left me. The girls were okay, but sometimes... When they did, they would join in to, you know, they will only use me when they needed homework or something. So, so finally, <laughs> eighth grade came and I remember my teacher's words, uh, which, you know, she, she was directing to the whole class, but I took it in and I applied it into my life. So what I did near the end of the, near, um, near the end of the school year where, you know, we have, we don't have that much work. So I decided to do something about it. So I wrote. A rap. Yeah, I know. You can't imagine me rapping. But anyway, <laughs> I wrote a rap. And in that rap, I make fun of everyone. <laughs> everyone. So during the break, I get up and I ask my teacher permission to say it, uh, say the rap. And I did, I did not rap it, but <laughs> I, I, I did say it. So I'm making fun of everyone in the classroom. And... That person I'm making fun of, his face turns red or her face, you know, you could tell they're upset. But the moment passed because now his time or her time is over. It's the next student I'm bringing down. So everyone is like, you know, happy, laughing at each other, but still, the, you know, edgy because I made fun of them. Then what I did at the end really surprises or surprised them. What I did at the end is I started laughing at myself and I made jokes about myself. I said what the thing kids said about me. I laughed at myself and uh, everyone start laughing and no one even object to, uh, object to me for making fun of them or bringing them down because you know at the end I laughed at myself I laughed with them so I follow what my teacher told me and uh, actually the two or three months that were left at school it went smoothly 
So something similar, but not exactly happens in this book at the end, but you have to find out. Okay, moving on. Enough about me. I'm not really an interesting person. I'm a, an, an introvert, so you know it takes a lot of guts for me to coming out here and talking. Um, like I said, my confidence was taken away from me, not just from the bullying, but also what was taught in class. Uh, I was a minority; very few Muslims were there, so a lot there wasn't anything about Islam being taught in the class. Um, and I felt that, you know, we Muslims were nothing, you know, no history, you know, there was the dark ages and no one ever taught me how Muslims had advanced during the dark ages when in other parts of the world it was the dark ages and it, in the Muslim world it was the golden ages. So I was like very, you know, I was very sad. I, I had strong beliefs in God, but when you know nothing was being mentioned about what happened though, during those thou thousand years, you know the world was not all dark. There was light coming from somewhere, and no one would mention that. And it w it really took my confidence away. So you know, I I really love teaching social studies class, but I believe that social studies class has to be very diverse, and we have to make sure whatever students we have. We make sure that even if we could take a few days out of the lesson, the curriculum, the lesson time and teach just, you know, even if it's one child from China, let's t teach about China. If it's one child from Antarctica or wherever, uh, or one sick boy, let's teach about their faith. Let's teach about them. Why? Because that's when they will feel comfortable. So I felt very, um, one was the bullying and like I said, one was not, not anything mentioned about my faith what my the Muslims had contributed to the world so that really like took my confidence so it was not it was just a few years ago that my confidence came back my self-esteem came a while back before that but like I said um it took some time and you know this is not just happening to a Muslim this is happening all across everyone this is happening to sick uh children who follow the sick fate this is happening uh, to Chinese people, Japanese people. The, this is happening to Mexicans. This is happening to people all around. This is happening to different faith groups, different races. So I'm just one part of the story. And I'm just telling you my story, but there's more to it. So excuse me for a second. I didn't mention what else I'm going to do with my book. I do plan to do workshops. Um, first, I'm going to start in my neighborhood in Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Jersey. I'll be going around and giving workshops to children and another workshop to parents and also having reading for younger children on different ways and strategies to eliminate hate. Hate can't exist on this earth. We have to make sure that we have to work together. Can't, I can't do it alone. We need to be together, united on this. Okay. Um, now I'm going to start, that's, um, the book launch was, is over, I think now it's, it's more focus on the webinar. So what is my focus on the webinar is giving you strategies on how to build empathy, empathy toward in a child, how to build love, consideration in a child's heart. You know what happened during recent events, and you all see what's going on. You know, it's yeah. Lately, it's just escalated, but it's been happening for a long time. With, with um, of course, Standing Rock. You see what's going on with the um, Black Matters at Lives with the Muslims. Uh, you see so many things. Um, uh, you see people entering six, six uh, the six uh, temples and shooting them. You see so many things happening. Uh, it's sad, right? We all feel sad about it. But what can we do? What can we do as a community? What can we do as an individual? We have to ask ourselves, how can I stop hate? How can I kick hate out of this world? You know, we could live in, a, in this world without hate if we all put our, our efforts together and try. So, uh, continuing with that top thought, um, with the recent election, um, it was so disgusting. I, I have no other words to describe it. It was so disgusting because these are our leaders 
these are experts they, they're experienced they're financially they they have everything set our our leaders who are were running for election and you see them bullying each other on national tv and our children are watching these grown-ups these old people you know getting on each other and one is backbiting the other and one is talking about the other and bringing the other person down and you know uh, it makes you think you know what's going on here why why are these old people older people who these young kids are looking up to they're bullying each other on national TV and our kids are watching what would they learn what would they learn they won't learn anything good so don't expect for our kids to behave and we as the adults are not behaving we're not really behaving it's hard to digest that but that's the truth you know it said the saying goes it takes a village to raise a child but in today's age that village is nowhere there's no village to raise a child that's why families are being destroyed Fab family is the fabric of society, but you see it's being destroyed because there's no village to help that child. Parents are being blamed. I'm a teacher and I see every time people play, putting the blame on parents. And I have to stand up for parents. Don't blame these parents. Why? Because they are going through a lot. So many new things are happening in the past 10-15 years that parents do not know what to do. New technology is coming, new advancements are coming. We don't know what to do. Parents don't know what to do. Even for myself, when my son, um, my oldest son, he's 23 now, but when he was a teenager, he wanted a cell phone, and I didn't know much about cell phone. It just came in, you know. So it just came in, and I'm like, what should I do? Should I get it from now? What should I get? You know, I was just afraid he would talk to a girl. You know? So anyway, <laughs> I didn't know the harm of phones. So it was something new. The, think about all the social media, all these new things that are coming. And parents, they're lost. Well, how can we blame parents? We're always blaming parents, parents. Yeah, there are neglectful parents. I'm not saying careless parents. They are like that. But there's, I've seen so many parents who try so hard day and night. They, they get, up, get up very early and they drive kids to good schools. They do so much. They work hard for them. But they're being blamed. But why are we blaming the parents? Why don't we play, blame the society? Where is the village? Where is that village that, ra that we need to raise that good child? It's not there. It's nowhere. I don't know about you, but I like this uh, movie called Bugs Life. I know it's a cartoon. Uh, I really like it and enjoy it. There's something special about Flick and what happens in this movie. Flick, he's an individual, I relate to him a lot. <laughs> he's an individual who's not understood, who's like no one wants in their <laughs> uh, surrounding. They're pushing him away and getting rid of him. So what I saw, how I could relate to him is he is motivated, he's, he inspires. He, um, he has something in him that, you know, changes the whole colony of ants. As you know the story, for those who have not watched the movie, um, there's these um, grasshoppers who are mean and big, like my bully. <laughs> but I forgive you. <laughs> yeah, they're mean and big, and they come to um, take advantage of the small ants and tell them to give us the seeds, collect seeds for us and give it to us every season. So um, the ants, they oblige, you know, they uh, obey and they follow along. So then what happens is um, Flick, he doesn't feel comfortable. He don't think this is right. He thinks this is wrong. It's totally wrong that these big people, these big creatures are taking advantage of us young, small insects. So what he does is at the end of the, even though at the beginning no one wanted him, at the end every he became the superhero. He united the ant colony. He told them that this power we have if we unite, we could get get rid of these um, grasshoppers. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is, if we people who wants good, 
who, people who wants peace, people who wants love and understanding, wants unity. If we all work together, all work together to build that village and give it to the family to help them raise their child, we can make that difference. But we all need to work together. You know, getting rid of hate too is the same thing. We need to get rid of hate. And we have to all work together to get rid of that hate. Just like Flick did with his ant colony. He united them. He brought them together. He used creativeness. He was motivated. He was determined. He got out of his comfort zone. He was not giving excuses to himself. He went forward and did it. And I'm really proud of him. <laughs> I always give this example to students and young people. So continuing on with that, I just, I'm not going to really go into, you know, the technology, um, into the different terminology of bullying because I think that information is everywhere and, you know, a lot is going on. I do things differently, um, like Flick, you know, I try to do things my way and so um, just uh, some things I want to mention, but I'm going to say quickly as possible because of time wise, the real things I want to say is later on. So there are three types of people um, regarding bullying. It's the one who's bullied, the child, the kid who's bullied, the bystander who looks Maybe he laughs, maybe uh, he or she doesn't care, maybe they feel something but they don't do nothing about it. So then there's also the bully and the bullies of, are different types. They're bullies who uh, bully just because they want to. They, feel, they like power, they do it because maybe they, they're not, they don't have love, no attention at home or anywhere else. So they, this brings them attention and fame. Um, there may, may be others. There's a lot of reasons uh, bullies bully. So we also have to understand them too and not just label them, oh, he's a bully and, you know, uh, detention or suspension. We need to really counsel that bully and understand him. Um, so continuing on, um, like I said, we sh another thing we should also be aware of is parents, you know, maybe a lot of uh, your children are coming to you, oh, I was bullied in school. Being a teacher, I see so many different cases. When a child, you know, sitting next to a child and they bump their elbow and the other child say, oh, teacher, he bullied me. <laughs> the child does not understand the concept of bullying. Hitting someone on the elbow or a book, accidentally touching them is not bullying. Um, so what I do with my kids is I try to teach them communication skills. So I tell them how to communicate, people skills. So how to talk with him and say, you know, you hurt me and talk to them nicely or um, do you mind moving your elbow or moving down a little bit. So I tell them not to complain everything, little things to me. So learn to communicate with them because this is not bullying. So I had to really teach them a lesson about, about bullying. What, what is bullying, what is not, what to do, what not to do. Um, so I'm going to continue with that. You know, there's different types of bullying. There's verbal, there's physical, there's cyber. There might be other kinds too. We need to educate ourselves on them and help our child or help our students. Um, so like I said, what I want to focus on is um, giving tips and strategies on how to, how to build empathy in a child. If I'm not pronouncing that word right, <laughs> it's a tongue twister for me. Okay, this advice is, um, there's two parts to this. There's one focus for parents, aunts, uncles, grandparents, what they could do. You know, it's that village working together to make that child a good child, successful child. And then the other part is, you know, for schools, teachers, administration, uh, coaches, um, mentors, there's different types. Uh, anyone who's dealing with kids, they're helping kids, different activities they could do. You know, I could stand here and give a lecture to my students. Okay, they learn some things, some facts, and that's it. Would they apply it into their life? No. They will not apply it into their life unless we uh, make it very interesting. We use their emotions. Talking them to, to them through emotions. You know, touching, touching their heart. You know, we're not, I mean, not literally, but with our words, we touch their heart. Uh, we speak to their heart. 
um, just telling them things and talking, it, it might change some minds. But we really need to think, do things differently. And I mean, I see people doing it here and there. Schools are doing it here and there. I've been applying these tips in my children's life and my students. And I've, I've seen um, benefits in it. So the first thing is, um, of course, the parent, you have to be a role model. If you're sprawling racial slurs and uh, talking about this person, that person, and making yourself better than the, that race or that nationality or that tribe, you know, your child is looking, even though they don't, they might be playing with their toys, they're hearing you. They're, they hear you. So they hear everything you say. I want to tell you a little bit about my parents. Both of my parents were born in Afghanistan and raised there. So they came to the United States with me when I was young. And the way they raised me, they never told me not to hate anyone or not to be mean to anyone or anything. But their actions t spoke to me louder. What, how they lived their life taught me how to live my life. And I'm trying to do that the same with my children. So what they taught me in life was that um, I'm sorry, I can't see the comments because the phone is very far away. I know some of you are typing. So, inshallah, I'm going to go through the comments. Question time will be at the end of q and I will even extend the time up to 9 o'clock, inshallah. But anyway, what time is it anyway? 8.37. I'm talking a lot. Uh, okay. Uh, where was I? So, my parents, they, they, they set a good example for me. My father, he was an activist for peace. He would protest, he would go and protest, he would take me and his, my siblings along and we would pr protest for peace. I was very young, it was cold, it was in New York City, I remember. Um, he would invite any, any kind of people, African American, Caucasian, Spanish, Asian, Jewish, Christian, they were all welcome to our house and they were treated as royals. That's one thing about my Afghan culture is that, you know, anyone who comes to our, our house, we have to treat them like royals. So my father, he would go all out and treat them like, you know, it's their wedding day. <laughs> so they were treated very well. And that showed me how to respect guests and how to treat them and honor them. He was very respectful to older people and that taught me how to respect older people. He was very merciful to the young children and that also helped me. And of course this is this was ingrained in our faith, in our religion of Islam and I, I my father was applying that to his life. My mom on the other hand, she was doing her thing. You know, she never turned a sick person down when they needed help. She would go to them and give them their, her support. She would stay there, clean their house up, uh, cook for them, take care of the child, and take care of the sick patient. And anyone who came to the house, you know, my mom would be cooking. My, my father, he was helping out. So, you know, they set a very good example for me. And I didn't realize that until, like, later on in life that how much good they did and they taught me this but one thing did happen not that my parents are guilty of it's not their fault since my father he was the eldest and in our afghan culture all our cousin our aunts whoever are related to us they will come to our house because my father was the oldest and when they came they brought in their <laughs> you know talking with them and they would, would say a lot of racist remarks and stuff. And my heart was like, why are they talking like that? I was a kid, you know, I couldn't express my thoughts. I was very, uh, I was an introvert, like I said. So I would be like, why are they talking like that? So anyway, um, so like I'm saying, my parents really set a very good foundation for me of tolerance, love, and understanding. And I really want to apply that. Even though I had this, three years of bullying and hate against me, then on the other hand, my parents are showing me this love. You know, love is greater than hate. You know, look at my father, you know, he, he was older and he was, uh, we weren't that rich, and but he would give, give the best dinner to people that, you know, people who not eat, eat royal palaces, you know, they, they were treated with dignity. That person felt, um, 
them wanting to come again and again. And we will also go, you know, I remember going to churches as a kid. Um, our father would take us there and we had Christian friends. Till this day, I have this one Christian friend. She was our friend since we came to the United States of America. So, you know, we took my, what my father taught me and that, you know, like I said, what my mom taught me through their actions really motivate me to make sure my kids grow the same way. So I do that with my kids too. On my Facebook, there's this album. I forgot what title I gave it, but what I do my, with my kids to love. So like I take them to churches, I take them to synagogues, to elderly homes. Um, so I do like different things with them to build love in them for everyone, for humanity. So I need to keep, uh, go on because it's taking too long. Uh, enough about my me. Um, okay, so we, we should teach our children about empathy and consideration for other people. Uh, in my book, Princess Diversity, in the last page, I have a list of ideas what to do with kids, with your children at home. I mean, you don't have to do it only. Uh, your uncle, the uncle could go and get his kids and your kids or the aunt or the grandparent. Someone could do it. You know, it's, you know, how to help the child first. They have to understand emotions, uh, building their character. Um, so they're just different strategies I give in the book, which you could, I'll, I'm going to say some. So, um, you know, teaching the, the child responsibility at home. You know, sometimes our kids, they go volunteer outside of, but at home, uh, they, they don't do anything. So first we have to teach them first to respect themselves. Then, you know, their family working inside, you know, that's charity. That's, 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 um, when you ne neglect your own parents and you go help the neighbors, you know, that's not good. First, you need to help your parents and don't, don't neglect the neighbors too, but don't neglect your parents too. So, um, you know, helping sick family members like my mom was doing, um, you know, support people, your family members if they're going through hardship or anything. Um, so, and, and in this box, um, so anyway, um, so there's different ways to teach uh, children empathy because they need to feel, they need to see. If you're just talking, 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 oh, we need to be kind to the poor and help them, give them charity. We need to take care of the sick. And they never seen a poor person. They never touched a poor person. They never felt a poor per person. They never smelled a poor person. You know, that, that sense, they smell it. They, they hear their voices. They f hear their stories. That will change them. Once my daughter, I took her um, to her elderly home. She didn't want to go. She was like, Mom, I don't want to go. I said, please, just let's go for an hour. This old lady, she's lonely. She, she, she doesn't speak the language, English language. Um, so she's lonely really there. You know, it's a double, triple, a double the hardship on her because she doesn't speak English and she's in the nursing home and she's alone. So finally, I took her. Uh, I took her. Uh, it, the one hour became two hours and my daughter just sat there and she listened to the story of the elder and you could see her face you could read her expression on her face she became so moved so upset that this this older woman was here and um, when we came back I asked her I said I thought you might be irritated that I'm staying so long and she was fine about it and she said, Mom, you know, I, I, I really was moved by her story and I felt so sad for her. She said, let's do it again. And, you know, that really, um, the reason is why, you know, I've been talking about elders to retreat the elders respect and all that stuff. But it's not really affecting unless you put them in that situation. So when she went there, she felt, she heard the story. She saw the tears coming down the lady's face. She felt so many things and it changed her. So now she's, you know, I've, I've also done it with the school I've been working with. We went to elderly's home, uh, out in the nursing homes, and we took stuff to them. And it was a group project. The kids, they were very nice, mashallah, happy. You can see the smile on all the older people's faces. They're so excited that, you know, all these young, vibrant kids are coming and giving them gifts. So they were all happy, and that triggered an emotion in them. You know, and we need to do more of these things, not just in nursing homes, um, you know, kitchen soups. We you know we could go to kitchen soups. 
uh, offering food to the poor. Um, so there's different, different, different things you could do. Think about some and give me your ideas too. So uh, let's continue on. Um, another thing is turn off that TV, turn off the radio, turn it off. Because the, these kids are hate, hearing this hate, 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 hate. You know, mm, the Muslims are coming, destroying the United States of America because they hate us. Really? <laughs> I think um, it's the opposite. We're not doing that. We're actually building America because it's our country. It is our home and we love it. I love Philadelphia. That's where I'm, I am from. I, I came here. Uh, th this was where I took my first step in the United States, was Philadelphia. It's the um, city, city of um, brotherly love and sisterly affection. So it's a city where love was built. So, you know, I love my country. I love my, um, my uh, city. And I, I, my love doesn't stop there. My love is for the whole world, for all of humanity. I just don't think about the best interests of myself, but the best interests of the world. As humans, we need to work together to make the world work. We can't make ourselves better and neglect our neighbor, right? Because that neighbor one day will turn against you, or one day you will be down and that neighbor will bring you up. So really focus on helping everyone, not just yourself. So, uh, so turn off the TVs, turn off the radios. It's putting fear into our children. Our children are scared. I, I don't know, my daughter, she comes to me on the day Trump is elected. I don't have cable, I don't turn on the news. I don't, I don't want my children to hear this garbage. Um, she comes to me, mom, the purge is gonna happen on the Muslims. I'm like, what, where did you hear that? Of course, another child at school, Parents probably watching TV, the kid is hearing it, they're scared, they think the purge is going to happen on the Muslims. So she, she tells the news to my daughter and my daughter tells my, me the news. And I'm like, oh my god, now I have to you know, teach her, sit her down, explain to her, no, don't worry. So anyway, uh, turn off those TVs. One, you might put fear in your child, it takes their confidence away, the self-esteem away. Two, you might be making someone who becomes a bully or a hater. Uh, because if your child is um, not in those categories that are being mentioned on the news, your child become, could become arrogant and think they are better than others. They could become the bully. Or not all the time. You know, sometimes, you know, think about it this way. Pretend you're a bully, right? And you're, uh, you hear in the news that... Uh, the Mexicans are coming to take over your jobs and your parents are going to, you know, this is a child thinking, you know, you have to go to the child psychology and think, think about how they're thinking. And the child will be thinking, oh, the Mexicans are coming, they're taking our jobs away, my, mo my mom or my dad is going to be jobless and what's going to happen to us? So a fear is put in that child, he starts hating the uh, Mexicans. So that's why we need to, another reason to turn off those TVs and radios um, or any internet. Don't talk in front of them too. Don't talk anything about this in front of your child, uh, whether it's in school, anywhere, wherever you are. Do not talk about it in front of your kids. Um, I mean, it could be the same thing. I understand why people might, kids might be afraid of Muslims, of course, what's being said on the, on the TV, you know, just one Muslim does something, it's Ooh, it's everywhere but when so many Muslims I've seen are doing so much good uh, it's not in the news you know the kid will never hear that news they will hear that other news so that's another reason like you don't want your child to, to be a bully you don't want your child to be uh, to be um, someone who loses their confidence and their self uh, ability to do better so you know many reasons to turn off the TV <laughs> um, the, the, and the, that's that's for parents and uncles and you know they could do so much to build that village and make their children better build their confidence build love in them you know there's you know they could build um do coat drives together as a family they could make a donation box decorate it uh, collect money give to charity if you could you know travel travel the world if not you know, Chinatown is right down in Center City if you live in Philadelphia 
or look in your area, you want to teach your, your child about China, go to Ch Chinatown. If you want to teach your child about Italy, there's the Italian market. In New York, there's the Jackson High, learn about the Indian Pakistan culture. Uh, so, you know, if you can't afford to travel, you could travel in with the United States and you see all these different uh, uh, shops and towns and places that have a part of the, another country. Okay, at school. Now, you know, like what I told you what happened to me as a child, my teachers never ever that I knew of said anything, stood up to the bullies, they didn't do anything. Only one teacher, she gave me sincere advice. She said, she was, I could tell by her face, she was upset, she didn't like. Uh, so she would tell me, because uh, I, I had her one, two times a week, I think, and she would tell me, why don't you go tell the vice principal? And I took her advice, and when I did tell the vice principal, he told me to ignore it. Every day, ignore it, and you know, do your work, try to learn. Yeah, that's very hard for a young kid. You know, a young kid, I was 12, between 12 to 14 in that age frame. I lost my father at 12. So, you know, it was not easy for me. Um, so, teachers, please, please, please do something when you notice someone is using hate against another child. Administrators, please do something. Men mentors, coaches, anyone who, who has a child under their care care please support them protect them and give them the understanding they deserve so as parents what we could do in the school is be part of the school always be involved understand what's going on um, letting your principal and teachers know about a concern you have for a child if your child follows a, a, a faith where they have to pray a certain time or they can't eat certain food. Make your teachers aware of that. Uh, if a child has a certain illness, a disability, make your t parent and make the teachers, make the principal, everyone aware of it, so they have an understanding. And when the t you know, there's sometimes when I did not know some of my students have certain issues, and I was very upset. I know there's privacy, but when I understand that there's this issue with this child, it makes me. Uh, deliver the lesson in a different way, have a better understanding, not get upset, why isn't the child trying harder? When, when I know and I'm informed about my students, if they have any learning disability, it makes me become a better teacher because I'm able to uh, cater to their near, their, their learning style. So anyway, always like with my daughters, my sons, I would always inform the teachers and the principal write them a letter that my child has to pray five times a day and one of the prayer, uh, depending on the year, comes during the school time. And they were nice enough. You know, they, they gave a room where they could pray and I was very grateful for that. I appreciated that. My sons, you know, they had to go to Juma prayers. I would take them out of school and take them um, to Juma prayer. And, you know, um, they can't stop you by law. As long as my child uh, completed their work, so, you know, I was on top of that. Um, my daughter, she wore the hijab, and I did not want her to go through what I went through. So I, I went to the school, I talked to the teacher, I, I gave a talk about hijab, I took different hijabs, I took the kufis, and I told the children, and they all <laughs> enjoyed the, the talk, you know, they tried on the hijabs, and they, it was so cute. And, I mean, you don't have to be a Muslim only if you're a Sikh, if you're a Hindu, if you're um, any type, any religion you follow, and you're a minority and your child is being bullied, go, you know, get out of your comfort zone, go and teach your child about this and uh, your, your child classroom. Depending if there's more parents, there are more parents with the same race or the same um, issues, you know, maybe they doing an auditorium, doing an assembly, and having a diverse um, audience uh, teaching them about the different concerns you have. You know, if a Jewish is wearing a kippah, a hijab, a turban, you know, we need to explain this to the kids. They're young, they're, they don't understand, so we have to really explain to them. Okay, another thing is volunteer. Uh, 
yeah, volunteer to give a talk to the teachers, educate the teachers. You know, they have training days. Go to the school, talk to them, maybe take 45 minutes, maybe even less, half an hour, talk to the whole school, uh, the teachers, the faculty, uh, the administrators, educate them about whatever you want to educate them. Even, even if it's a rare disease. I remember this one father, he came to this one school. His child had rare disease, a rare disease, and he came to the school, even though his son was not in that school, but he wanted people to know about this rare disease. And he was so, you know, he, he, was, he showed so much love. And what, what he told the kid and me, myself too, you know, I was really inspired by him. You know, we have to go out there, get out of our comfort zone and teach. I think I'm going over my time limit, but um, I'm going to go quickly. I have a few more, two more slides to go and I'm, I'll be done. So, okay, uh, there's questions. I'm going to get to it. So please give me, um, let me go over what I'm saying and I'll go over the questions. Okay, for administrators, teachers, caregivers, mentors, coaches, any, any type of people who deals with children. These are some things you could do. Have a school-wide no tolerance policy. Don't tolerate hate. Don't tolerate any kind of bullying. Um, hold an anti-bullying week. I, I've done that in school. You know, I, I didn't want to be like my teachers who, you know, turned a blind eye. I, I, would, I made sure every school I went to, whether I, it was the whole school involved, I make sure, you know, besides my own teachings, I, I gave lessons I had to deliver to my students. I did this on my own, on my side, because I wanted to make sure no students get, get bullied. So I would hold a, a school-wide anti-bullying anti week. We'll bring people, we'll talk to people, we'll do different activities. Um, if I can't, I couldn't do it school-wide, I will make sure every year my students in the beginning of a the year, they understand what bullying is, what hate is, what is not allowed in my classroom. And alhamdulillah, all praise to God. I know some viewers are not Muslims, but you know, I have that Arabic <laughs> phrases that I use. All praise, praise to God. It has really impacted these children. Another thing which I love doing is called the multiculture day where, you know, it take a week or two, every class is learning about a different country, a different continent, a different culture, and they make posters and uh, they educate themselves. And what happens on this one day, everyone gets dressed up in the country they're representing or their own country their parents are from. And they bring in different dishes and people come and they tell them about the different cultures and different things that are happening um, in their part of the world. And it's very good. It's like, you know, you see color, you see, you smell all these different food. It's beautiful. It brightens everyone's day. I don't know, I just love multicultural day. And of course, you could use this book too, both the parents and in school. If you, you know, may, there's many books out there, yet this is one, my book is one, on t removing hate, removing it, bullying away, and like doing the activities in the back I told you about. Sorry, this is a proof of my book. <laughs> okay. Uh, have workshops for parents on how to recognize bullying in their child and how to manage it. You know, some parents, they don't realize that their child is being bullied. They don't see the signs. So, you know, if the school could do conduct a workshop on bullying, that would be very helpful because some of these kids commit suicide. And that's no, no joke. You know, we should take things serious. If a child is committing suicide, that's very wrong. You know, that means we as adults, as me, I have failed our kids. You have failed. We have failed our children. So we really have to take this seriously. Um, of course, we have to teach our child about... Um, Children in schools, what I do, I teach them about emotions. I think psychology is important. Teaching children about emotions, building their character, building their confidence. You know, I get them up. I say, stand up and talk. You know, let it out. Talk. And they do. You know, in the beginning of the year, they come all shy. And then at the end of the year, they're all bright, smiley, and joyful. That's what I want in my students. And we should, as teachers, administrators, we should all build that confidence in our child. They're beautiful, they're gifted, and if someone hates them and that 
that bullying makes them go down and down. down. They're not, the next generation will not be able to present their gift to the world because we, we as adults are not doing our job again. So, you know, having books in home, at schools, talking about different cultures, emotions, um, behavior. Some kids, they don't understand their emotions. They're upset and they start, you know, being mean to other kids. So, you know, them understanding it. So, I'm going to have my final thoughts and then I'll answer questions. I am very, very sorry. This is my first webinar on, live on Facebook. I know I went over time. I apologize. But my final message is to those people who let hate happen, the bad bystanders, I want you to understand that, you know, what you're doing is not very good because you need to speak up. You need to be involved because one day that's going to happen to you. So you really need to be involved for the good, for the betterment of humanity. Another thing is those who hate, who promote hate, who hates, who loves to destroy. Our doors of love and mercy are open. Our doors of forgiveness are open. Every movie you watch, every, every book you've read, the haters always lose. The winners always win. And who are the winners? Those who love. Those who want understanding, peace among the among the people. So join us, me, and other people like me to promote good and not bad. We'll forgive anything that has gone. So please, you know, if you're someone who thinks you're better than another person, whether in religion, whether in your race. That's not a good, good, a good, good, healthy way of living. Because it'll eat you up inside, always thinking, you know, I'm better, I'm better, egoness, and all this will develop in you, jealousy, hatred, envy, and you're going to get sicker and sicker. And I don't want that for you. I want you to come on board with us. Help us promote love, promote peace, promote understanding. Help us stop bullying and hate in school. Help us do so many good. You have the talents and skills. You know, you're showing it in a negative way. Come show it in a positive way. So, you know, come back to us. Because you, you always had that good when you. It's just something happened through your life that you start hating people and you start hating other people. So anyway, okay, now I'm going to go to, to questions. But first, I want to say thank you, everyone, for watching. And I'm sorry I went overboard. You know, introverts, when they don't talk, is one thing. But when they're passionate about something and they start talking, they never end. They never want to stop. You know, I could go on and on and on and on. But I know everyone wants to go to sleep or do something else. I will post my website and other links to my Facebook, my Amazon, a book on Amazon, my YouTube channel after this video is recorded. My website is gulmaki.com, G-U-L-M-A-K-A-I.com. Um, I have my fan page on Facebook, Gulmaki Sale, and um, my book is available on CreateSpace, Kindle, Amazon, and I have YouTube videos. If anyone didn't see my promotional video, my book trailer, uh, please do so. It's on my event page, but it's also on my personal page and all my pages. Okay, now question time. Thank you, Mira Murtaza. Uh, I appreciate you giving me that confidence to continue. Um, thank you, Venna. Sorry, I'm, I'm very sorry I might be pronouncing some names. Thank you very much for your comment. Aliya Chaudhary. Um, Please send one copy to Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, it's hard to change old minds. I'm not a pro at that. I like to work with the young kids. Okay. Okay, someone had a question. Um, if we don't turn on the news and uh, how do we teach our children about current, uh, current events? I mean, you watch the news. If you think uh, your child is able to um, digest it well. You know your child better than me. 
what I said was general advice, but spe spe specific advice, you know, you have to figure that out because you know your child better than me. Uh, you know what would trigger them, what would make them upset, and what would make them happy. I don't know your child that well. I don't even know him. <laughs> anyway, so it's better if you, there's, there's good, there's, not all news channels are bad, but you have to go find out, you know, do your search um, on what news to, to show them. You know, getting newspapers, like the old days, you know, make them read. Uh, get an article, clip it, give them that article to read. It doesn't have to be all online. Documentaries are good too. I watch them a lot. I watch them with my kids. You know, that's some type, you know, like the new documentary on the Syrian refugee. What was it called? Um, I know that they made that $1 a day. And the other one was called, uh, what was it called? I'm sorry. My memory is gone. No questions? White helmets. Thank you, Dana, my good friend. White Helmets, yeah, that was a very good documentary. My daughter, oh yeah, this is one thing I forgot to mention, you know, like like I told you, once you make an introvert start talking, she'll never end. Um, uh, my daughter, my children, whenever they're doing projects, I make sure they're educating their, their classmates and their teacher about Islam or any other, cult, you know, our culture. Why? Because they have a misconception. So like my daughter, she was doing a wax museum in third grade. So she became the wax uh, wax figure of Malcolm X. And the, she, the teacher was surprised when she told her she's doing Malcolm X. Now she's a 10th grader and she has a personal project, which is throughout the year. So I talked to her. I said, you know, there's a lot of Syrians coming to Philadelphia. Why don't you talk? You know, would you like to do your personal project on them? Ask them how they feel, what they went through, what, what are their plans living in the United States? Are they they're build, they're going to help us build the United States? Or what the media say that they're going to do? So, you know, she's working on it. She's very excited and happy. So that's another way to uh, um, educate the masses about minorities. You know, everyone should go out there. Okay, so no questions. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you. Have a good night. Enjoy your weekend. Um, I wish I knew how to say bye in many languages, but I don't. But assalamu alaikum. Take care. You've been a very good audience, quiet and behaving. Okay, bye. Jazakallah.